Okay, I think we are live. Hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. Uh, this is Taylor from Otago here in Japan. Um, today's webinar, we're going to go over tofu and the secret to tastier tofu. Um, so I wanna go kind of through the tofu process with you guys, um, talk about refractometers and pH meters, how to use them, um, the different models that we have, and then once we get through the presentation, we can do a Q&A session. So I would appreciate it if you could put your comments or your questions in the chat so that we can um, kind of use those for our Q&A session. Um, also, I'll be putting a poll in the chat as well. Um, just a simple question to see um, who's currently using a refractometer to measure soy milk during tofu production and who's not. Um, so if you could kind of give me a heads up and answer the poll, I would appreciate it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here in a moment. Um, one thing is we did a time change, so not a lot of people can watch live. So if you are watching this after the fact and you have questions, please email us and then we can answer those for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, have a little presentation here for you guys today. Okay, so the secret to tastier tofu. Um, the two main instruments that I have are um, an instrument from our PAL series and then also from our um, master analog series. So um, in case anybody stumbled into this webinar and doesn't know what tofu is, um, tofu, otherwise known as bean curd, um, is a food that's prepared by coagulating soy milk, um, so just making soy milk hard, um, and then pressing it into a solid white block um, there can be different softness and firmness to tofu um, depending on how you make it. So different foods require um, harder tofu and different foods require softer tofu. Um, so tofu I think is actually becoming um, a lot more popular as a food around the world. Um, so definitely should be seeing some more tofu production um, happening in the future and more use of the refractometer for quality control. Okay, so let's talk about the relationship between soy milk, um, which is used for tofu production, and concentration. Um, so when you're making the tofu, um, it's made from soybeans, which turns into soy milk, and then the soy milk turns into tofu. So um, it's been um, shown that the higher the concentration of the amount of solids or soybeans that's in the soy milk, the higher the uh, concentration means the higher the uh, or more intense the flavor. So if you have a higher concentration, you have more flavor in your um, tofu at the end. Also tofu percent um, solids has a relationship to the tofu texture. So um, if you have a lower um, concentration of solids for your soy milk, you might get a different texture than if you have a higher solids percent of soy milk um, when you're making the tofu. So um, solids can affect the flavor and then also the texture of the tofu. So the secret to making perfect tofu in terms of um, flavor and texture is to be consistent with using a refractometer. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, when you're making tofu, you do have to make the um, soy milk get hard into tofu and using that is um, a coagulant. So coagulant is just something that is going to make a liquid turn in more into a solid. So it hardens the soy milk to tofu. Um, the more of this coagulant that you put into the soy milk, the harder the tofu becomes. Okay. Okay, so um, 
When you're using a refractometer, it's going to measure the um, percent concentration of the soy milk. So depending on um, the type of products that you're making, um, there's different specifications or different um, concentration percentages that you'll be looking for. Um, this is a rough guide. Um, really, there's a lot of different types of soybeans and soy milk out there, so these are not exact um, rough or these are more rough numbers, not exact numbers. Um, so just a guideline for you to know. So when you're making tofu um, and you um, are measuring it on a refractometer, um, you're looking for about a um, soy milk concentration percent of around eight. Um, when you have soy milk, um, and that's just regular um, milk made from soybeans, it will be around 3.8%. Um, and then there's also soy milk drinks. So soy milk drinks, um, not to get confused with just regular soy milk, um, soy milk drinks have other things added into them like different um, amounts of sugar and um, other ingredients. So it's not just the soybean in water anymore. It's got a lot of other ingredients. So when you measure the concentration of like a finished soy milk drink, um, you should be switching to a different refractometer that measures in the BRICS scale, which is like a total concentration scale. So if you're measuring just pure like tofu and soy milk, um, measuring using our refractometer in the soy milk concentration scale um, will be fine. But if you're doing um, different types of soy milk drink, then you'll want to switch over to something that has the brick scale for a more general concentration. Okay. So let's talk about um, when you will actually use a refractometer for soy milk and tofu production. Um, so when you're making the soy milk, um, you'll put the soybeans in the water, um, they'll soak for a long time, and then you're going to take that whole mixture and blend it up into a sort of pulp. Um, it's boiled and then you're going to separate them so that you um, separate the solids and you end up with the soy milk. So at this point, um, this is where it's really, really important to measure the soy milk concentration with one of these to make sure that you are um, getting enough of the soybean into the soy milk. So like I said before, if you don't have enough um, or a high enough concentration, your tofu might turn out differently once it has hardened. So this is like um, pre-coagulation quick check of the soy milk. And so then once they're actually about to make the tofu, um, that's when they start to put in the coagulant. Um, another term for coagulant that's commonly used in the tofu industry is nigari. Um, that's like a type of magnesium chloride um, salt brining solution. It has a lot of different ingredients in it. Um, but that's put into the soy milk mixture, mixed up, and then that is put into the mold. And then once the um, soy milk has solidified, it becomes the tofu that we all know. So um, another point that you want to use a refractometer is when you're adding that coagulant or that nigati into your tofu um, mixture or your soy milk mixture. Um, the reason why you want to measure is because if you don't put the right amount of the coagulant in or the nigati, then you're going to get um, a funky to tofu at the end. So if you have too much of the coagulant, it might become too hard. If you don't have enough, it's going to be too soft. Also, if there's a lot of the coagulant, um, you might actually notice it as a taste. It might be a harsher taste. So um, when you're mixing up this um, coagulant solution, you want to make sure you have the proper ratio between the nigati and water. So it's good to measure with a refractometer. And then there are people that once they add the nigati into the soy milk, they'll measure one more time um, because the concentration should go up because you're adding more materials into it. Um, they want to just check to make sure that the concentration is um, correct 
once they add in a new material into the mixture. So right now we're already at three different points in the process that you'll want to use a refractometer. One is the um, soy milk before you do anything to it, um, just making sure that you have the proper amount of soybean solids. Um, next one is when you're make, mixing up your coagulant to make sure you have the proper ratio. And then the next is after you add the coagulant, just um, a quick check to make sure that everything is okay before your soy milk starts to solidify into tofu. Um, after the tofu process is completely done, um, it's solidified, it looks like a little white block. Um, there are people that smash up the tofu and put that on a refractometer as well and measure that um, concentration. So that's kind of like your final check to make sure everything is okay. Um, not everybody does that final check, um, but there are people that prefer to do it that way as well. Okay. So let's move on. Okay, so let's talk about um, our master analog refractometer for soy milk. Um, so this is the master soy milk. Um, the one I have in the specifications for this presentation is master soy milk alpha. Um, so what is kind of nice about this um, analog refractometer is it has both of the concentration scales that you need for the whole process. So you get the soy milk concentration scale, but then you also get the magnesium chloride concentration scale. And that's the one that you will use for the um, Nigati or the coagulant solution. So um, it's kind of nice because if you look on the side um, where the scale is, it actually has two scales. So you can kind of see that um, when you're like let's say you're measuring the um soy milk on there um you look on this side and you'll measure like it could be anywhere around 10 percent but if you put the uh, magnesium chloride on then you'll look at this scale and you'll see um where the boundary line is for that so it's kind of nice because you get both of the um, scales in one unit um, the only really downside with an analog refractometer is that sometimes um, this boundary line right here isn't super clear all the time um, this can happen if you're not cleaning the instrument correctly or you don't have enough light outside or you didn't focus the um, eyepiece on the instrument um, can also happen if maybe you, know, so you made a mistake and accidentally damaged the prism. Um, there's kind of a lot of factors that can make it hard to um, read on an analog scale. Um, that being said, um, we are humans and we do make mistakes and it's a little bit harder for us to look in, focus our eyes and read the measurement on a scale. Um, so there are some people that, you know, maybe it actually says 10%, but they look in and they're not really paying attention and it says 12% actually, um, or they're just rounding, something like that. So that makes for a pretty um, subjective measurement method. Um, whereas if you go over to the other um, models we have, so something like the PAL 27S is a completely digital instrument. So when you turn the um, instrument on, once it's measured, it's clearly um, on this display here. Right now we have LLL because there is nothing on our prism, um, but you get a nice clear measurement. You also get to know the temperature, which is pretty nice. Um, so a lot of people just prefer digital because it's easier to use, easier to calibrate, easier to clean, and you get a nice objective digital measurement. So um, I think when we have, um, yeah, maybe some larger tofu production um, facilities using our products, they prefer this too as it's a little bit more durable and easier to use. Um, when you have something like this, um, it's definitely like the traditional style. So um, you have to look in the eyepiece, but if you drop this in any water, um, this eyepiece might get moisture inside so you'll have to replace it. Um, also if you drop it it's probably going to go straight down and it's pretty likely that you might break off this daylight plate here. Um, 
Our instruments are really, really durable, even like just the regular analog refractometer. Um, but you know how people can be in production sometimes. So if it's not in a lab setting, it might be nice to just use something like this. Um, there's nothing that's going to break off. Um, if you drop it into the pot of soy milk or in a bucket of water, it's fine. It will just float. Um, really water resistant, um, dust proof type of instrument. So it's just a lot more um, user friendly and production friendly compared to something like this. So we talked about um, measuring refractometer for the soy milk itself, but then also the coagulant, um, Nigati magnesium chloride solution. So if you're going to go digital, um, we do have two different models for that. So PAL27S, which I have here, is going to measure in the concentration of soy milk scale. Um, so this is what you'll measure the actual soy milk on. But the PAL43S down here is measuring in the magnesium chloride chloride scale. So that's um, a separate use unit that you can use for magnesium chloride percentage. So I guess one good thing about this is that both are in um, one device, uh, but if you go digital, you do have to get two. So just keep that. Okay. So there is, okay, I got disconnected for a quick moment, so I think it's okay. I will go ahead and keep going. Okay, so let's kind of talk about actually measuring. So I don't have any um, tofu with me today or any soy milk with me today, um, so I can't really do the actual measurement, but I do have some pictures here and um, some descriptions that we can talk about. Um, so when you are um, making your tofu, you do want to take the sample of soy milk out. Um, usually the sample is really, really hot um, after you've started boiling it. So what is good is to just kind of stick it in a beaker here. Um, you don't need too much, just enough. Um, and then just make sure that you give it a nice mix. Um, just make sure everything is homogeneous within there, um, nothing separate, and that's going to give you a more stable measurement. Um, it will also help cool down the sample. Um, good thing about this is that it has automatic temperature compensation, so it can handle um, higher temperature samples. Um, if you look here, you see the temperature compensation is 10 to 100 degrees C, which is quite hot, um, but it's always nice to kind of have it cool down a little bit before you're going to measure. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier to acclimate to the sample stage. Um, so once we have our sample prepared, um, we'll put a few drops just on the prism of the instrument, which is this um, little part here. And then um, once it's completely covering this glass prism, um, you can even fill it up all the way to the brim if you want, that's fine. Um, then you'll press the start button to get your measurement. Um, once you have your measurement, or once you press start, um, you'll get your measurement in just a couple seconds. Um, it does say here that if the value is unstable after taking um, a few measurements, like if you see um, that it keeps getting higher, keeps getting lower, um, then just take maybe four to five measurements and average the results. Um, I think what they're saying for that is that um, if like, there's a very high temperature difference, it might take the instrument a little bit to, of time to acclimate. Um, so what I like to do when I'm measuring hot samples is actually just put the sample on there, um, let it sit for 30 seconds or so, and then start measuring. Um, that's because the temperature sensor is located right under the glass prism. So um, your sample has to heat up the glass and then get to the temperature sensor. So if you put it on and press right away, um, it might not have gotten all the way to the temperature sensor. So it's just nice to let it kind of acclimate to the instrument and then start measuring. Okay, so that was pretty much um, everything I had for the two little handheld refractometers. Um, 
that we have at Otago for measuring soy milk for tofu production. Um, I believe the main takeaways for that is that there is a few different points of the tofu making process that you can check concentration. Um, and the more you check concentration, um, the more you can dial in your quality control and make sure that you're being consistent and getting the same number every time. Um, consistent product means um, high customer satisfaction, um, consistent product and correct product also means that you're going to have high customer satisfaction. So that is the main secret for getting tasty tofu and consistent tofu. So these are our main guys. Um, so supplementing our tofu product line is going to be our pH meter. Um, pH is measured across probably every single industry um, in food. It can measure the food itself, it can measure cleaning solutions for sanitizing, um, wastewater, so much. But for um, the tofu industry itself, um, it's good to use a pH meter because soy milk has a tendency to go bad quickly, um, so it's good to check the pH for food safety so that there's no bacteria growth. Um, our pH meter looks a whole lot like our regular PAL refractometers. Um, did that on purpose. That's because this is a nice durable style, so it's good to have a durable pH meter as well. Um, this is our PAL pH designed with a flat electrode here. You can see, so that means that it's really, really easy to clean off and it's very hygienic. Um, I think if you're going to compare this to a dip style pH meter, um, then you will notice that this is going to last you a lot longer because the electrode is a lot more durable. Um, you'll also notice that this is a dry storage pH meter, so you don't have to um, store it with any solution or whatnot. Um, it can just stay in the box as is. Um, it comes with, with its own pH buffer solutions, so you're set for a little while on there. Um, that being said, this only needs to be calibrated um, a couple times per or a couple times per month, so you're calibrating a lot less than your standard uh, pH meter. So this is a really, really great addition to your um, food production with, with the refractometer and pH meter um, kind of go together like a set. So um, for food, you should always be measuring pH to make sure that you're following food safety laws. So um, this is definitely, definitely a must have for you guys. Okay, so let's move on. All right, so last, this is just a quick introduction I want to give everybody for inline refractometers. Um, so across the food industry, um, especially if you're a larger food facility or larger tofu production facility, um, you're going to want to start automating your measurements. Um, automating me measurements means that you can catch mistakes quicker, um, you can gather data more easily, and you can reduce labor costs um, because you're not having to um, use somebody's time and effort to always go over and keep checking the concentration of the soy milk or whatnot. So it's kind of good to have something directly into the system, always doing that for you. And then if you have it um, hooked up to any type of PLC system or alarm system, um, then it can alert you when you go out of spec. So um, I have it with me here today, just so you can kind of see what it looks like um, and the size and whatnot. So um, this is the display side, and then this can be inserted into your tank or pipeline directly to measure the sample that's flowing by. Um, and then you'll hook it up via cables to what other system you have. Um, so it's just a nice little compact unit that you can install into your system. Um, so if there's any questions about that or whatnot, um, please feel free to let us know and we would be more than happy to help with um, any installation questions or whatnot. Okay, so we have arrived at our Q&A session. Um, let's see here what we have going on.
So do we have any questions? Yes, we have one. Mm -hmm. uh, can I measure sugar content of solid milk with refractometer? So if you, that's a good question. So let's kind of talk about um, measuring. Let's see if we can go back here. So, hold on. So this is going back to this part. So a refractometer, it cannot pick out just the sugar content in a solution. So if you are measuring um, soy milk, you want to make sure that it's just like the soybean in water when you're using something like the PAL um, 27S. But if you have like a soy milk drink and you've added sugars and other ingredients after it, um, you'll have to measure in the BRICS scale here. Um, and that will give you the total concentration. It can't pick out just the sugar, but it can give you the BRICS percent as um, a total concentration. So main answer to that is no, it cannot measure just the sugar content out of the soy milk. Okay, do we have another question? No? Okay, cool. So I think that will conclude our session today. Um, thank you so much for joining and really appreciate it. Um, if there's any questions, please feel free to email us. Um, we'll also put a link to our feedback form. So if you could please leave your feedback um, by submitting that and just kind of let us know your thoughts and um, ways we can improve, then we'd really appreciate it. Um, without further ado, I will say goodbye and see you next time.